We are absolutely delighted and honoured to be finalists in the Green Gown Awards uh, for carbon reduction. We set ourselves very testing targets here. We wanted to reduce by 33% by 2014 and I'm pleased to say that we exceeded that by 10%. Our work isn't done, of course. We have a target of a reduction of 50% by, by 2020. These achievements are not by accident. They are through a lot of collaboration and hard work. Not just, obviously not just in estates, but across all of the academic and other uh, student service departments. We have 1,500 staff here and about 13,000 students. And speaking as one of the cyclists, I'm very happy to be, to be part of that, of that team effort. And now I'm going to introduce you to uh, Rachel, who leads that effort for us, and she's going to tell you more about the team and more about our work here at London Met. At London Met, our initial carbon reduction targets were a 33% reduction by the end of 2014. This is based on a 2009 baseline of 13,500 tonnes. We've reduced our carbon emissions by 6,000 tonnes. This is the equivalent to 12 million tube journeys between our Holloway Road and Allgate campus. A key part of this process is to improve environmental awareness across the university. We've undertaken events like running a Green Week every year that the Student Union has been heavily involved in. Part of this process is to make sure the event has been very fun so that people get involved. So we've done things like have a tower run of terror up to the top of our 13 storey building to show that it's, it's quicker to, to run to the top of the tower than take the lift. We've also started doing student inductions, so every student that arrives at the university gets told what we're doing to reduce our carbon footprint and how they can help us. One of the largest savings that we've made is through using our building management system to control our heating and cooling at the university. Carbon savings from the BMS since 2011 have been uh, 1,200 tonnes, and that has been uh, a result of tailoring the, the BMS to operate um, in conjunction with the space and the usage of that space. We spend possibly two to three hours every week tailoring the, the, the BMS, the systems to operate um, in conjunction with the activities in the space and that comes from data provided by our room bookings team. The Rockets um, Theatre, uh, the Great Hall as it's now called, um, was a fantastic project for the university to transform a, an old theatre space which was always cold. Um, it did have a ventilation system but it was uh, extremely life expired. Uh, we have managed to install a bespoke air handling unit with full BMS control. Uh, we can now maintain temperatures overnight due to the insulation that we've in, included in the replacement roof and ceiling. We've undertaken a massive programme of lighting refurbishment over the last couple of years. Every time we do a new project, we put in improved lighting. We are looking at LED technology. We've saved around 54% of the energy costs alone in this building just by replacing the light fittings. It's had a big impact on the student experience. Uh, before, this space was quite poorly lit and a bit dingy. Um, but by repositioning the lights and the, and the uh, new LED fittings, it's, it's a nice bright space and you can even read the uh, titles on the books on the lower shelves now. We've made massive improvements in our IT systems over the last four years. ISS are proud of the contribution that they've made to the significant carbon reduction in the university. We've contributed over a thousand tonnes through various projects. So we have over 6,000 PCs in the university and we realised lots of people weren't turning them off at night, um, particularly open access PCs, so the ones that the students use. So we initiated a remote shutdown procedure to make sure that we actually shut down all of the PCs across the university. The impact on energy saving was massive immediately. So we've moved from standard desktop printing, where the university had over 2,000 desktop printers sat in various offices around the university, never turned off, to a centralised managed print system initially with 183 printers, but now in our second iteration down to 111 larger multifunction devices. In terms of power consumption, the devices were much easier to manage, so they put themselves to sleep, uh, enter very low power saving modes. The university has undertaken a programme of upgrading building fabric across the state. 
Uh, thermal imaging is one of the many tools we have um, that we can use to survey our buildings externally. We wanted to find out where we could uh, improve the energy efficiency of the, the envelope of the buildings and places to start are clearly insulation, uh, double glazing and, and various other issues that uh, we could find. So we, we did find a lot of areas that we can work on over the, the coming years. Uh, we've, some of it we've completed already but I think we've got enough to keep us going for several years to come with the improvements to the estate. At London Metropolitan University, we're quite a spread out campus. We've got buildings around Allgate, Moorgate and Holloway Road. So obviously there's quite a large carbon footprint delivering items between these campuses. So to overcome this, we've even introduced an electric van to deliver our post. It is incredible to see the amazing results London Met was able to achieve this year in the field of sustainability. Of course, this result would not have been possible if it wasn't for the collaboration of the Students' Union, student population and the university. I'm going to say something very important now. I am proud to be in Vario Met. Mm -hmm.